working for CRAD within COESA, and I will start now my presentation straight away. I'm based in Mozambique at uh, University Eduardo Mondlane. So what I uh, wanted to uh, take you uh, um, through with this presentation, building on what Salome just presented, is to begin the road to deconstruct your representation of the One Health concept from no harm and start thinking differently, especially about the integration of the environmental health sector within the One Health concept. And uh, I will end up by taking one example of uh, uh, ecosystem, health approach, uh, ecosystem health approach uh, that we are doing here in, in this area uh, in, uh, in Wangi. So, as you know, uh, the One Health uh, uh, concept has been here for the past 15 years or so. Uh, it has been evolving a lot. Uh, many different institutions, uh, international organizations have come up with different uh, graphical representation of the concept. But basically, it is an approach that started uh, through the collaboration between the human health sector and the veter veterinary sector. And clearly, we all uh, recognized uh, through, I mean, in the 12 countries of COESA, that the environmental health sector is not well integrated and well represented in the One Health Platform uh, initiative uh, existing uh, in the country. So the classic representation of the One Health concept is a three component uh, uh, gr uh, graphic like this, with the first component being the human health component. We're talking about the health of individuals, of population, and as Salome uh, just said, we're also talking about the well-being and mental health of, of people. The second, the second component is the animal health component, and it deals with uh, domestic animals, production animal health, with pet health, with sometimes wildlife health, but sometimes wildlife is, is somewhere else. And uh, we can also talk about animal production system health. And then we come to the last component. So even its definition, its, its wording varies uh, from uh, one representation to another. It, it can be called environmental health, it can be called ecosystem health. We like to call it social ecological system health, but you have more simplistic representation where the third component is just wildlife health. So there have been some hill definition of that third component and that, uh, that uh, issue has come up with the fact that environmental health historically has not been well integrated into uh, the One Health uh, uh, concept. And of course, we'll be hearing about in the next day and a half about plant health, crop health, soil health, even some concept about water health. Where do they fit into that picture? Okay, so, um, so one of the work that we would like you to, to go through is really to try to with the, all the information that you will get in the coming, uh, coming day, days, is to deconstruct that representation and try to make your own representation. It doesn't have to be a common one because the contexts are different, but just, just to brainstorm and, and start uh, uh, reorganizing uh, uh, those, uh, those thoughts. Hopefully, luckily, sorry, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the quadripartite, so FAO, WUHA, the World Organization for Animal Health, WHO, and UNEP, came up thanks to the support of uh, the One Health High Level Expert Panel uh, with a new definition of uh, One Health. And we are lucky because we have two representatives of the quadripartite. We have uh, Lillian uh, from WUHA and we have Mark from uh, FAO that are here with us today. I will not go deeply into the, the presentation of that new definition, but basically what it says, okay, what it says is that uh, on the left-hand side, you need to promote intersectoriality and interdisciplinarity across the different sectors, and that uh, uh, those processes need to be applied from the local to the national, to the regional, and even to the global level uh, in order to uh, achieve that uh, uh, one else. This needs to take into account uh, inclusivity, inc equity, and access, and through the development of soft skills around collaboration, communication, coordination, and capacity building, you can develop, uh, uh, you can deliver uh, one, a one else approach, which is healthy animals, healthy human within healthy ecosystems. So, I would like you to, um, to also consider the fact that even if One Health is defined at international level, you will need to 
think about how it is relevant uh, in your own specific context. So Eastern and Southern Africa are context speci specific. You have your own ecosystems, a lot of savannas, for example, your own culture, uh, uh, a huge asset about wildlife, very healthy wildlife populations, and, uh, 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 and some good uh, uh, economic uh, return for that for some of the countries. Uh, specific institutions, specific people, and therefore what, what means One Health uh, for each of your own country and how will you, on which aspect will you, will you need to emphasize in order to deliver a, a, a relevant One Health in your country. And for example, the wildlife livestock human interfaces in savannah ecosystem is something that is very specific to Eastern and Southern Africa. And I just want to mention that these pictures were taken uh, 20 years ago in the Garissa district in Kenya. Uh, and I'm mentioning that because uh, we were capturing those warthog with uh, Francis, who is here, and so I just wanted to, to mention that. Um, so if I come back to the, to the WHO definition that Salome just presented, and the two components that he mentioned, so what we can call the biomedical component, which is the absence of diseases for humans, and the holistic component, which is mental health and well-being, uh, I would like to emphasize the, the two narratives that she mentioned that, that are very uh, important about, uh, uh, um, about when we talk about health. That negative narrative about the first component, fighting against the disease, eradicating uh, 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 symptoms, etc., and the p more positive narrative that can, be, that can come out from the, from the second component. So from... from those of you who were here in Pretoria, uh, I, I tried to apply uh, in Pretoria uh, uh, that definition of human health to non-human animals. Okay, and you remember that that table. I will just go through the um, the, the last part, which talk about wildlife health, free-roaming wildlife. So, if you apply the biomedical component to free-roaming wildlife, you don't want to eradicate all the disease from wildlife because wildlife are uh, in interaction with pathogens uh, that create disease and disease uh, have a, a, a strong uh, influence on the regulation of wildlife population as much as predation, for example, regulate wildlife population. So you have natural disease dynamics that you don't want to uh, interfere with. And so that leads to uh, some disciplines such, such as disease ecology, evolutionary biology, and many other type of uh, discipline. If you think about the holistic component, now you're talking more about viable wildlife population or wildlife communities. And here you talk about disciplines about animal welfare, but especially conservation science and, and, and wildlife management sciences. So I tried for today to apply that human health uh, two component uh, concept, two ecosystems. So it's just ideas, and uh, uh, please don't don't uh, uh, don't use that as a as a definition. So I tried first to apply it to um, ecosystem health. So here the level of intervention is not anymore population or individual; it's the ecosystem. And what do you want to to maintain and to to nurture are natural ecological dynamics and and functional natural processes which call to all the ecological sciences. And so, and if you want to, to apply it to the, to the holistic component here, it's more about sustainability and resilience of ecosystems. And the discipline associated to that are environmental and sustainability science. I tried finally to apply it to social ecological system health. Here we mean that we, we, assume, we, we assume that all ecosystems are interfered by, by humans. Uh, let's take the example of Wange National Park, just here. Wange National Park, uh, some 50 or 60 years ago, uh, park management created some artificial boreholes to, uh, uh, to provide water for wildlife. So even that, what we it looks like a very natural ecosystem, has been uh, impacted by human management. So social ecological system health, here we work at the, at the scale of the landscape of territory, so it will be Wange National Park and its periphery and the communal land around. And when we talk about the biomedical component, we will talk about uh, the coexistence between people and nature. And here we talk about rangeland, wildlife management, human wildlife conflicts, natural resource management. And applying the holistic component to this would be more towards good quality of life for people, 
animals and nature. And you can see the, the, the link with what Salome has presented before. And here there is a strong need to have the social sciences uh, uh, involved in order to, to have some participatory processes and sustainability sciences. So this is just to, uh, uh, to show you the range of disciplines that are needed if you want to talk about ecosystem health and or social ecological system health. And so those disciplines correspond to stakeholders that are in institutions that you will need to engage with if you want those aspects to be tackled in your One Health approach. So from now on, you, you, I would like you to start your road towards a better integration of environmental health in the One Health uh, uh, concept. And so starting from that representation to go somewhere else. And one example that I wanted to, to show you is uh, as a good example of uh, social ecological system health is uh, starting where we are in the Wange, uh, Wange National Park. Um, you need to know that that specific park and its periphery belongs to a transfrontier conservation areas, which are within SADEC, you have 18 of them. Those are uh, um, um, uh, matrices, matrices of protected areas, different types of protected areas, transnational, uh, but associated with communal land, like the small-scale farmers that you've seen on your way down here, uh, but also cities like Victoria Falls, the mines that you've seen. So there are huge, uh, very uh, complex land use systems, and those TFCAs have been funded with two objectives at the same level, biodiversity conservation and local development and well-being. And if you see the big, the big one, the largest one in the middle, I will zoom in now because that's where we are currently, uh, Gift mentioned that we are in the Kavango Zambezi or Casa TFCA. It's five countries. It's the size of Spain. It's 2.7 uh, million people. And it's uh, the largest population of elephants in Africa, 250,000 elephants in that area. You can see the, 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 the connection between very different types of protected areas. But in between, you have large, uh, extensive tracts of communal land and other types of land uses. And in Southern Africa, we can say that wildlife conservation is very successful. Wildlife population are in very good shape. So the first objective of TFCA is achieved, but in terms of local livelihood and well-being, this is not the case. And that this is the type of, of research that we, and, and, and research action that we try to develop in this, uh, in this ecosystem. So we are right here now, and so, we are here we have, with all the partners, we have a research station that has been going on for, for more than 20 years. So um, there are two, um, two uh, uh, um, things that I want you to remember. Is first one is the zone atelier. So we are in the zone atelier Wange, okay? It's a long-term social e ecological research platform. And this zone atelier belongs to the research platform Production and Conservation in Partnership, which is an association 17 years old uh, uh, between uh, Zimbabwean and French uh, research organization. But recently, uh, Mozambique, Botswana, Zambia, and South Africa have, uh, uh, have come uh, with the, have joined the platform, sorry, and some of the multipliers are belong to this platform. So it's a lot of different institutions uh, together and what we have, uh, um, um, the vision that we have developed uh, a couple of years ago through an uh, internal uh, review is that we do research and research action towards self-sustaining and functional social ecological systems for the betterment of life of people and animals within Southern African protected areas and their territory in 10 to 15 years. And we do that through uh, um, uh, a wide network of partners, uh, some of them are here today, uh, uh, all the universities, Zimbabwean university uh, that are uh, uh, in the region uh, through development or research projects. And of course, with a lot of engagement with local communities and trying to promote and facilitate the relationship between uh, park uh, and, um, and um, local communities and influencing uh, even the, the Wange National Park General Management Plan, trying to introduce a section about the relationship uh, between the park and, uh, um, and local communities. So we have a, a lot of uh, young researchers, researchers, 
partners, NGOs, uh, institutions that are here today. Please uh, uh, talk with them. They are very knowledgeable about, about, the, about this area. And um, yes, I think it was a, a perfect example to be here uh, with a, that kind of landscape health approach that we are developing uh, in this area.